the place that um, gathering a lot of startup project business. Mm -hmm. So it's in, in my description of uh, innova innovation industries, like the players that people that live in that place can create something new, can inspire and can make uh, a lot of innovation and with the building, with the uh, daily life and also um, it's the place that people come to that place and they, they can definitely learn something new. That's it. Okay, thank you. Or any other person want to touch it? If you have a slide for this. Oh, really? Yay! Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
and this goal, this goal of the district is emphasize university industry partnerships and commercialize of ideas. And this is the benefit of innovation district, like first part capitalized force of nationally significant life science pharmaceutical uh, cluster per the development of hundreds of small firms attract so several major technology companies develop the modern concept of co-working and encouraging entrepreneur and startup in its highly quality environment and lastly attract billions of dollars of seed funding and uh, later stage investments. Yeah, here is my research about this innovation you know, They have limited of land, so they acquired more land and develop uh, real estate like work, work and office. And they have the in any office who will use and rent the space must be like <laughs> must collaborate uh, with the university and industry with innovative ideas. And many times, actually, this one they open for their own students. Students who graduate in um, biotechnology or uh, computer science, media lab, or anything, they spin off to be entrepreneurs and they can rent the space with the advice from their former professors. So it's more like incubators and also the rent or spin off companies. Uh -huh. so, so they have the thing, anyone who rent this one. So, so it's kind of um, community. Because in that area between MIT and they try to have like a, uh, like education players and, and and try to develop. Actually, the area behind my university is now like um on that um uh, ground, and they try to develop the ground field that into a better place by developing good themes and education to help. Uh, the community and when they have to start the companies there, they could hire local people, they can have more jobs, and so that is the real reason. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, bye bye, Mr. Is my name? I am Kai and 
about uh, about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital currency, and I see that the fees of the Bitcoin is very cheap, but it is illegal in in many countries because no one no one no one can inspect the money transaction of of the Bitcoin such as you can people can shopping 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 at rats by used by 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 Bitcoin and they can hide they can hide somebody to kill another another people by by Bitcoin and uh, and if someone have have if someone have a lot of Bitcoin they can control the world the real world of of it and Uh, do you use um, Celsius in Thailand? 
yeah. So uh, minus 30 degrees. So, so it's very cold, and um, that, that is um, coming to be a benefit for the uh, big servers of the internet because because they are heating so much. In Finland, you don't have to like cool them. They are building a uh, big uh, halls which are not heated at all, but the servers are uh, producing the heat in the, the so so you, I, I think that's innovation that you are using the uh, environment uh, to do something like te for the technology. I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't know if you understand what I was <laughs> explaining because I, I uh, didn't prepare this at all. But um, in my, uh, the point is that uh, in Finland they are uh, using the uh, environment and the Celsius, minus Celsius is to keep those servers cool and cool down the temperature of the internet servers. Yeah, and I think that's our uh, innovation. But we have, we have actually the, another type of the platform in the internet, the community, which is not called community, like for, for a 3D printer, there is one website that everybody can upload the 3D model, everybody can download it and uh, uh, publish the 3D model. That is kind of history to sharing the innovative and innovative Structures by the data. So we actually, I my in my opinion, like this too. I don't know why do we still need a location for United People. And actually, there is some new new world in this hardware. The hardware uh, software could be used to be in this. Like everybody can publish without any label or something. But now the hardware can be in this product as well. So that's. Require some platform community, which is, could be for innovation history. That's what I'm thinking. So, Respond the country's um, uh, Thailand four point zero, as you heard about the new direction of Thailand, and therefore um, we would encourage any uh, activities that could integrate uh, knowledge from the universities to community, and where we are located here, and that's why you, why you ask why why is here because uh, we we are here and we would like to do or to improve the quality of community or whatever we can do. But when, when we locate locate some place, mm. that place can have the person who is selected or something. Uh -huh. so yeah, no. yeah, I agree. Yeah. So now is uh, the challenge that is of course is is um, when we want to, to do something other people may not want or may not be their requirement. But I, I think in order to, to work together with communities, we could listen to their life, their problems, their behaviors, what they need, and we could think about how we could support them by using our knowledge into an innovative ways. So, so, so it's challenging for this semester. It's the thing of all the classes in this semester to increase the laptop or open studio or bottom of the classes. We try to we try to link into the same thing and we we move forward together. That is the the background of, of one in the district in this time. Okay. So, so, so. 
So we need, we need a proper program inside. Yes, we will go look at the site some, some weeks.
So, um, uh, at that time, do they have their cross syllabus already? Yes, yes. Okay. You have cross syllabus. So, so everybody knows the, uh, the format of the class and objectives of the class already. Yeah? So, Open Studio, we will, the, the, the main purpose of this class is more like uh, to share ideas among different disciplines. Uh, because after you get out and graduate, you will work with some other people who, have, uh, who think differently. And so this is a good opportunity that you could learn from other friends what they think about in the same problem set. Okay, so you can learn from others and to learn how to work as a team and to help the community using your expertise. So, so this is the key you know, objective of the class, is more like to share the knowledge and the thinking that also is a different discipline. And, and so the class format will be like a dance of professors from different disciplines will give an introduction of his um, idea of that class. And when you listen, you could think about how you can utilize or apply into your work or into your project, or into this class project, open to the all, or whatever. So the, the first session will start uh, by sustainability. Okay, so um, first I would like to um, give an overview about um, introduction on sustainable design or sustainable development a little bit. Okay? So um, I would like you to think about your lifestyle. How do you come to school? How do you sleep? How do you eat? How much do you have for your clothes, for example? Kun on. How do you come to university? How come you come to uh, Mother bike. Uh -huh. What about could not buy car? Walking, oh, very sustainable. Okay, um, I, I I just want to you to think about yeah? and and um, so everything we, we do really affects uh, our environment and climate. Uh -huh. How do we eat? Do we eat a lot of meat or do we eat a lot of vegetable? Uh -huh. So I will. Talk to you later, and I will show you how 
every day's activity affect our climate นะคะ like this นะคะ are you having I'd like to show you this video, but it's in French language, so I better, uh, uh, you don't need to, I, I could speak in English, or you can see the subtitle here. The more we eat meat, the more we kill others. We should have less meat consumption. The more developing countries, the more the consumption of the meat. We have been eating meat more. 
than our parents or grandparents' generations. The more people, the more demand in food and water. The demand has been growing for the food. The more we consume, the more we need the land. We have to cut the land many times for crop, for food, for meat, cows, pork, or chicken. So many times there's a uh, abuse, the animal abuse into the production, very crowded and therefore it's not a good way to do like this. So many boys have been raised against animals abusion to reduce the meat consumption. When we eat more meat, we need more water. One kilogram of cow needs uh, what, 15,000 liters of water to grow the grass and almost 5,000 liters for pig, 4,000 liters for chicken and less for vegetable. Also, the more meat the output of this animal is uh, contribute to greenhouse gas effect. Greenhouse gas like uh, carbon dioxide or methane gas out of the animals um, waste. Uh, methane gas. Also, we need to to do uh, okay the fertilizer. We also produce methane gas. Uh, so many times each year, several hectares and are forested for agriculture, for the meat consumption and therefore uh, the global warming will occur by the farm, battery of the farm can also pollute the water, the source of water, river, They, they have a uh, shorter life and they need to really put a lot of injection for medicine to preserve their life. It's not, not the good for our health. Okay, that is an example of the effect of how we eat. Okay, see the way we eat how we eat really affect the environment. Now you see the related chip, yeah? And also how much we have, what do we own, also affect the environment, Naka. Like I think many of us, many ladies, we have a lot of clothes, accessories, or lipsticks but never used up or nail pens but never use up, we always buy new ones again and again. A lot of underwear and accessory, or we always buy trend fashion and only wear it once or twice. We have many shoes to throw away or one suit but never use. So what we have really, um, it costs the and what we have really affect the environment. I will skip this video, but I will show you the 
others. Look at the own wisdom. Look at our own wisdom but, uh, that um, we... This is Thai ways of cooking a long time ago. We have stove that made out of um, that we use um, charcoal and also one pan to cook very quickly. And then we have um, something to pound the um, garlic or beans that we can use human interactive. It's good exercise and we could do it uh, harder or softer by very simple equipment without using any electricity. Like this, one equipment can use for many meals. Like it's very simple. But nowadays, there are many equipment just for eggs, one is just for water, for this, for that. We have so much uh, equipment. The more we eat, the more we use, the more environmental has been destroyed and disturbed and it hurts ourselves. Now I would like to show you uh, the environmental impact. The cloth, for example. The cloth produced from cotton, right, from cotton. And cotton, India is facing problems of disappearance of wild animals such as lions, elephants caused by deforestation. Deforestation, they have no food. And therefore, after that, they have no food, they die, they disappear. What about more cell phone? When new cell phone come in every year, it really affect. Of course, I like some too. I use some too. <laughs> for it. But I don't buy it every year, of course. The more cell phone, what happened is um, 1,000 million units per year. Behind the scene is a war in Congo for mineral search. Uh -huh. Mineral search. When they do mineral search, uh, what happened? The gorilla has been decreased by 90%. Uh -huh. The mine business in the Great Forest, 91,000 square kilometers, because of very small chip in the computer. Uh -huh. And in the next generation, I have heard nuclear nuclear um, power plant will be on many countries in Asia, like in Cambodia and Vietnam, they erect a um, nuclear power plant. And what happened? They need to buy uranium from Australia or somewhere. If the mine business happened, the, the forest can be disappear, koala can be gone. So so this really affect you know, by, by having uh, uh, some decision, it affect others, okay? Napkins, what happened? While we are using napkins, trees have been cut. World consumes 27,000 trees per day for power, paper towels and napkins. So maybe I encourage you to use sponge or cloth. Snack, what happened? We have many snacks. Snacks, Office of National Economic and Social Development Board estimated that Thai children and teenagers spend almost 10,000 baht per year for snack. And what happened for snack? We have a lot of wrap, gift wrap left like a waste. But in, in, in um, old wisdom days, we don't use plastic wrap. We use uh, banana leaves or some duck leaves. That is very sustainable, okay? and this because it's biodegradable. Yeah. So, so that kind of uh, leaves can be used, but now today uh, we have very nice package and uh, wrap to protect the oxygen and moisture to prolong the life. Okay? Because of industrial um, 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 uh, business. Plastic bags, what happened? It takes 450 years for degradation. And foam, it stays forever. It's non degradable material. Leather uh -huh. bags, you should have less uh -huh, because we have to kill animals, crocodiles, cows, snakes, mantas, 
these are disappearing really. So I encourage just one. Oh, very little is enough. <laughs> of course. Okay, frozen food. Okay, we, many of us rely on 7-Eleven food because they are available. However, what happened? Okay, frozen food, because uh, if you buy frozen food, of course, they have to use energy to cook at the first time. And then they have to cool down, right? It uses a lot of energy to cool down, frozen. After that, to take energy to transport to, to your home. And then freeze it again. And then we are, when you are going to eat, they use energy to heat up. See, you see a lot of process. It involves indirect energy. You can see. And when it stores on in, in the fridge, it, it, it takes energy as well. See? They said that Thai, uh, Thai consume more than 70 million percent food boxes. The process takes 10 times more than normal cooking. If possible, we should eat fresh food. Nah? In Thailand, it's available. That can be because um, many food is available. Most food you can cook electric equipment, there are many old equipment and, and many times without proper use or proper trash, it can create a global warming. Deforestation. In Thailand especially, we used to have um, 171 million right of the forest and now they less than 1 million almost half of the forest area has been invaded. Why? Food, they cut for to grow corn or um, what potato, something for animals, for feed animals, or to grow to do agriculture. So, so if we consume less meat, we can save more forest. We can grow more forest. Global warming, and of course, um, you will see many. You have seen many effects of global warming today. Yeah? What else? Like uh, erosions of the uh, the mangrove area near university campus, or uh, the flood in Bangkok, big flood, or in other area. What else? Let's slide hurricane or some others that we have never experienced before in Thailand. I don't know if there is any sign of global warming in Finland. Uh, yes, there is. Like what? Um, when I was a child, uh, there was very, uh, I live in Helsinki, and it's very south part of Finland. So there was very snowy uh, winters that could be snow like um, mm -hmm. this high. Yeah. But um, nowadays there are not as much snow. Not there much there might be, but but it is very seldom and uh, because we haven't been like uh, 10 years. Yeah, so right. Yeah. yeah, I remember when back when I was in the US, um, that's like a white Christmas. Yeah. But now, even Christmas, no snow. The snow uh, comes later yeah. and quite less snow, you know, for skiing. Some resort they don't earn much money because uh, the snow season is uh, very short in Korea too, right? Are you snow uh, snow player? Uh, do you ski? Yeah, I ski. Yes. Yeah. Snowboard. Snowboarding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're from where? So. Okay. Yeah, that happens uh, all around the world. And what about in Japan? Any? Any sign of um, global warming you experience? I think 
you you can see and and I think everyone should help each other na try to reduce the waste, reduce our consumption. Everyone can help, especially your design, your specification, the way you work. Everything affects our environment. Um, sustainable development equals to exploit the earth and environment that disturbs everyone back on our self back. And, and I'm sorry, this is in Thai. Um, and um, this is in Thai. I would like to um, uh, talk a bit about climate change in Thailand. I mean, the impact. Actually, this is from uh, National Economic uh, Board of Thailand. Impact on natural resources on physical environment, on economic and social changes. What happened? Okay, the natural resource, we have seen the fire in the forest because it's dry, it has been very dry in the summer. Fire, and then we lose the, uh, the land because of erosions. Also in Bangkok, in Bangkutian, our long, long, uh, in far away campus, because of erosion. What about you, you live in the, uh, near the ocean, you live in the Mutsakhorn. Do you see any erosion problems? Some. Some. And, and they said that economic, it affects economics because of the, uh, the fishery, um, fisherman business coming down. I don't know what, uh, you are in, uh, in which uh, business? Right? Farmer, which farm? Uh, fisherman. Business, can you tell me what happened around around your area? Any change that you have seen in uh, that affect the economy of the people? Can you catch more or less or what? Any effect? All the walking fish, they die a lot. Yes. Why? Because of, uh, because of the trash. The trash from yeah. the restaurants nearby. As mm -hmm. many factories in, in my city, there yeah, are no, no, water, no water treatment. I see the restaurant, they don't have any wastewater treatment properly. Yeah, also resort. They dump the wastewater in the water? Yes. And, and they, they pay the money to... They bribe the to governor. Yes. Uh -huh. What happens if you don't bribe? If you don't give? Oh. They don't catch you because uh, they don't catch the person who did something wrong to dump the water so that they pay. I see. Yes. Can you ask the policeman? I need to report if anyone put the uh, wastewater without treatment, maybe report to the uh, Ministry of Environment or something. If if the policeman cannot help. <laughs> yeah. Okay, see so, so so the effect the design of your resort should have uh, water treatment properly. Otherwise it affects everything the um also uh the flood are uh, very dry and drought and it affects agricultural uh economic okay? and as well as the environmental as well as the tourist industry i have just been to Wohin. Wohin is the city three hours away from Wahim is a very popular destination for Bangkok people and tourists. And what happened last two months, I went there, there's no more beach. I think, what happened? I've been there many times, there's very nice long beach. And now they say, because of erosion, the world changed. And then I do not want to go there to that resort again because of erosion. Erosion and then there's no beach from the hotel and then it comes to, to the ocean. They have to put um, rocks and there's no beach, rock or sandbags 
to protect from the erosion. You see, it really ruined the tourist business as well. So, and social change, finally, people will move out. Of course, when it's flooded, nobody wants to stay and they, they lose their land. I don't know, is it true? I, um, in Bangkuntia and Samusakorn area, the ocean level has been rising and some temples or some village are lost under the ocean. Yeah, a lot of flood. Around Bangkutian area, I, I, maybe one time, Kuntaka maybe to organize a field trip for our students who visit Bangkutian. Bangkutian area, maybe growing mangrove or visit the mangrove later. Uh -huh. Okay, so this one really affect. What can we do? We, for example, okay, if we can walk, or if we can bike safely, of course. If it's too far, you can drive. Yeah. So, so I think uh, in order in, in Thailand, around thirty six percent of energy consumption goes to transportation, cars, buses, trucks, uh, because of CO two emit from the car. That is a lot. If we have a mass transportation, a lot we could reduce CO two, or we could walk instead of. Um, with motorbike, we can walk from the BTS to the That one we can save the CO2 emission, okay? By transportation or by carpool, or you can move if you 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 are far away. You can move to where you work, okay? Something like that, so that we can save for transportation. Believe it or not. Um, our long, our far away campus is very far, and my my gas, my the cost of the gas is is very huge. Okay, is uh, I think is almost one third, almost one third of my salary, see, for the the gas and the expressway. Okay, uh, the cost is a lot, and it's hidden. Drinking and eating now you know. Maybe later we could have like that. We could have our own containers like this, so that we can reduce the waste from plastic bottle, if possible. Naka, New Year gift. You can think about maybe recycle, reuse paper to wrap, for example. Naka, traveling. So the way you act, the way you think, you do think about the sustainability. So um, so let me see. Let's take a break for five minutes, and then we come back for principles of sustainability. Okay, let me take a break. Kunta, Kunta, do we have the?